Product launches are ubiquitous here at Mobile World Congress, but this year one unveiling stood out from the crowds. CNBC has the inside scoop on Robo Race. After years of development from design to models to testing, racing and crashing, the highly anticipated Robocar was finally revealed. Announced in 2015, Robo Race aims to be the world's first self driving racing series. Think Formula One without Hamilton, Vettel, or Ricardo. Organisers want to pit 10 teams, each armed with two Robo cars against each other, using the same tracks as Formula E. Dennis Sverdlov's London based investment fund, Kinetic, is the main financial backer. We all believe the future of the automotive industry is going to be driverless, electric, and connected. And normally, RoboRace is the environment where you develop, test, and, and uh, get knowledge about like, uh, technologies. So we understand the future of road cars are going to be driverless, but we didn't see any driverless racing series. So we definitely understood this is the opportunity because this is the future, which is now. We have everything, everything except driver. Because we, have, we also have a team who is looking after the cars, mechanics. We also have a team who are making the algorithms. So we, we have everything here, but what is also important is that racing itself, like, like it was before, is not interesting anymore because like, it became a, a, a competition of the budgets. You don't see, it's not about like, uh, skills of driver, uh, it's about like, how much money your company has. And uh, we really wanted to make the competition more fair, and this is the reason why all cars in our series are the same. So you don't need to invest money in the hardware, all your investments are in software. The software in each of the robo cars will run off NVIDIA's Drive PX2, which has the same processing power of 150 MacBook Pros combined, but all in a compact case about the size of an average lunchbox. So how does the focus on software rather than the hardware compare when it comes to budgets? We spend uh, around one million pound to build one car, but uh, we don't change cars every year. So th those cars we will see in this shape probably for the next three, four years. In terms of budgets, it's uh, much, 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 much cheaper than anything, uh, any, any racing, but it's much more value for road cars. Because uh, right now, road cars do not learn anything from the uh, extreme sports. Engines are not relevant anymore, aerodynamics is totally different. This one is totally opposite. You need to think not only about your attack strategy, you also need to think about collision avoidance. All those algorithms go directly to road cars, make them safer. Safety, software and speed aside, one of the most unique aspects to RoboCar is its design. After all, there are no constraints of having to build a vehicle around the human body. RoboRace turned to legendary designer Daniel Simon, the man behind transport concepts in films including Tron Legacy, Oblivion and Captain America. He gave us a personal tour of his creation. So we have uh, AI cameras, you see one right here. So this is for the computer to see. And this is for us to see. So of course we want to invite people to uh, you know, see it on television. So we have a lot of TV cameras all over the car. So when you say AI camera, what, what does that mean? It's for the artificial intelligence to calculate based on visual information. So we not only have sensors like radar and lasers, we also have visual sensors. So this is literally an eye. <laughs> and we have ultrasonics around the car, 18. They take more care of the stuff that is very close to the car, in simple words. And this is magical stuff. These are so-called LIDARs, and they have to, this one here points all the way this way, and at this spot here, it overlaps with the other one. So these two cover the whole front. So it's very particular how these are positioned. And we have five of them around the car. And what about the tires? Is this stock standard or something specific that you've put on this car? We wanted to use road tires because, again, we want to influence practical cars on the right. road. That, that's why we have also a full-size machine. Uh, everything, every component we use, we want this to influence mm -hmm. road cars. It's electric, right? Yes, it's, uh, we have four engines, which is mind-boggling to me that we have two big engines, even in this tiny front. Let me point out the radar. You would not know that there's a radar inside. They have the size of a, you know, of, of a book, more or less. So we had to use special material that is invisible for radar, but we cover it with a nice graphic so you don't see it. What's this bit, the, the 
colorful well, we need very toe. practical things. So let's say it has, it has an accident. There comes a crane and picks it up, right? And that happened recently, right? It did. You got to test and out the function. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I love crashes. It's part of racing. And we build a... Pr and it's a good point. Oh, you come on. You, you've just been talking passionately about the style. You cried, didn't you, in your first crash? <laughs> well, it wasn't this car, right? It was right. one of our test cars. But it's a good point you're making because current race cars are very complicated. They add aerodynamic aids everywhere. The speed at which the air travels through this at 320 kilometers is mind-boggling. So we have an incredible downforce on this without any extra little pieces. So when it crashes, it's rather simple to fix, I would say. I believe this can drive on the ceiling because it creates a ridiculous amount of downforce. And just finally, how different does this look today from the initial sketches and the initial mm -hmm. image that you had in your mind? Shockingly close. Uh, you can barely see the differences. Uh, one difference is, do you barely notice, this was very round in the beginning because it looked nice, but it didn't press the car on the road. So we made this flat and almost a bit hollow and just physically now it creates downforce. But the overall look is the same, which I think is astonishing for such a project. Yeah. Daniel Simon, thank you so much for your time here in Barcelona. Been really interesting to see what you're up to. Best of luck with it. Thank you very much. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.